the final part of the first temple period was a trying time for the kingdom of Judah. The small kingdom struggled against the great empires of Assyria and Babylon and suffered from their might. The situation within the kingdom was even worse. The kings of Judah led their people down a treacherous path of pagan worship and heathen rituals. The spiritual and moral state of the nation reached an unprecedented low. The year 639 BCE brought about a sudden change in Jerusalem's history with the crowning of a young king. King Josiah, the grandson of Manasseh, revolutionized the spiritual culture of Judah and brought new hope to the people. Through a series of determined actions, Josiah purged the country of pagan worship and restored the belief in the God of Israel. And like unto him, there was no king before him who turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, neither after him arose there any like him. Josiah proclaimed the temple in Jerusalem as the exclusive place for worshiping God and establishing a new regime based on justice and compassion for the weak. With the weakening of the Assyrian Empire, Josiah extended his influence to the territories of the former kingdom of Israel. His kingdom grew large and strong as in the glorious days of David and Solomon. I'm standing here at Katef Hinnom, facing the old city of Jerusalem. An archaeological excavation conducted here in 1979 opened a window in time back to the turbulent days of King Josiah, when belief in God and in the Torah scriptures played a vital role in the nation's life. In a family burial cave from the first temple period, archaeologist professor Gabi Balkai made an extraordinary discovery. At that time, the people of Jerusalem laid down their dead on stone beds like this one. The custom was to leave the body in the stone surface until it decomposed and only the bones of the deceased remained. Later, family members would return to the cave to gather the bones of their relatives. They placed the bones, together with the deceased's valuables, in a stone repository carved at the base of the grave in which other members of the family were also buried. During the course of history, many such repositories were looted by thieves and left empty. During the excavation, this repository also appeared to be empty, but one of the young excavators insisted on digging it up anyway. As it turned out, an earthquake had apparently caused the roof of the cave to collapse, and the rubble had completely covered the contents of the repository. When it was finally revealed, the contents were fascinating. This repository contained the bones of 95 people, buried there over the course of more than 100 years. The various finds included exquisite ceramic and glass containers from the time of Josiah, as well as a wide variety of silver and gold jewelry, rings, earrings, bracelets, and precious gemstones. But the most surprising find of all was two small rolled up sheets of silver with holes running through their centers. The silver cylinders were threaded on a chain and worn like a necklace. When researchers at the Israel Museum Laboratory opened the cylinders, they were amazed to discover that they'd been engraved with tiny letters in ancient Hebrew. After the uh, discoveries made in 1979, the two tiny silver scrolls discovered right behind me here were transferred to the Israel Museum, where they were opened in the lab and they were shown to be covered densely with Hebrew, ancient Hebrew characters. Uh, the characters showed to be the priestly benediction or the Birkat Kohanim, uh, which appears in the Bible in the book of Numbers, Sefer Bamidbar, uh, chapter six, verses 24 and on. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious to thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Those verses are 2,600 years old. According to the shape of characters, according to the context of the uh, archaeological finds, 
and they are centuries earlier than the oldest biblical verses which were known until then, uh, being the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls found at Qumran. This was the first time that such objects were ever discovered. It was most probably customary in first temple period to wear upon the body, on the fingers, on the neck, on the heart, on the wrist, uh, all kinds of written objects with religious texts, very familiar to the tefillin, or the phylacteries, which are known until this very day in Judaism. It would be, of course, interesting to know who was exactly the person who wore upon his body this uh, uh, written object of 2,600 years ago. This discovery of the uh, priestly benediction discovered here uh, closed also a personal circle for me. I was born in the terrible years of Second World War in the ghetto of Budapest, Hungary. In my early days in uh, Hungary, uh, we were used to go to synagogue with my father and when we came home, my father was used to bless me with the words of the priestly benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious to thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace.